out of all the ways that we could close this thing, an assignment, a simultaneous close, which do you think is the one where we want most to do? Which is the easiest? Assignment. Which is the least expensive? Assignment. Which involves only one closing? Which one do you not end up in the chain of title? Which one will banks not allow? Assignment. <laughs> <laughs> So, which type of seller are we going to be working with when we do assignments? A private seller. That's right. A private seller. With private sellers, we can do assignments. With banks, it's going to happen. The contract has to be assignable. You don't end up in the chain of title. If I have a contract to buy Michael's house, and I sell that contract or assign it. By the way, when you're assigning your contract, you're effectively selling it to Sean. Sean now goes and closes with Michael. I'm out. I'm not in the chain of title. I wasn't the buyer and, I, and the seller. I got my assignment fee and I walked away. So we don't end up in the chain of title. There's only one closing and one set of closing costs and you do not need to go. In fact, when you do an assignment, it's arguable whether or not you even belong there. Some people ask me, they'll say, well, what happens if Michael freaks out when Sean walks in and not me? If you have a good title agent who can take control of the situation, the title agent will ask Michael a simple question. She'll say, Michael, I have a very big check in this folder in front of me. Would you like it? And Michael will say, well, yes, I would. And then the title agent will say, then may we please proceed? And you know what? If Michael's about to get a big fat check, he isn't even going to care if Sean is standing there or not. A good closing agent will handle that for you. Um, shoot, you can go online and get an assignment of contract, nothing flat. But this, the, the beauty of this one is it really makes it clear, even if you, use, if you decide to use a more complicated one, this is all the more complicated one does. It's just more complicated. It says that I certify that I, and I is you, your name, have an executed purchase and sale agreement to purchase the property located at 123 Elm Street, and I hereby assign said agreement to Sean for the total amount of blank. That is the amount that Sean is paying you to go away. That's what, not the total purchase price, but the assignment, the cost of the assignment, what he's paying for the assignment. I have collected a non-refundable deposit of blank, which is some portion of the number above, uh, due at, uh, oh, and the balance due of blank, due at closing no later than. Okay, so if um, you, it says, uh, I can have an executed purchase and sale agreement to purchase the property located at 123 Elm Street, and I hereby assign the said agreement to Sean, for a total amount of $15,000. I have collected a non-refundable deposit of $3,000 with a balance of $12,000 due at closing no later than the closing, no later than a couple days before your contract with your seller expires. Because if he doesn't close for any reason, you'd probably like to jump in and find another buyer. Although you'll have his deposit and he closes or not, you may not care too much, but if he's giving you three and you've got 12 hanging in the balance, you might care a lot. So if he's going to have a problem, I'd like to know that a few days before my contract with Michael expires because I might just jump back in. Because if he doesn't close by the date in here, he's in default. The date, today's date, the assignor and the assignee. I'm the assignor, Sean is the assignee. The 12000 will show up in a HUD-1 statement between the two of them as an assignment fee to you. And it will be paid to you at closing. You don't have to be there unless you want to, you know, have the experience of a check being handed to you. You could go later, they can mail you the check or they'll wire it to your account. 
What I suggest you do, especially if it's your first deal or two, get a check. Make photocopies of it. Put one in your wallet, on your wall, on the bottom of your toilet seat, <laughs> in your purse, in your briefcase, on the back of the visor in your car, and then a digital copy of it on the desktop image on your computer. The fee, the non-refundable fee up front is non-refundable, and oh, that's right about when the buyer's gonna say, well, I don't wanna give you much because what if there's a title problem, and what do we do? We got an email or a fax or a letter from the title company saying the title was clear and marketable. We say, already got that worked out. If you want me to take this off the market at this price, I need to know you're serious. I want to know you're as serious as a pimple on prom night. <laughs> Cough it up. Otherwise, <laughs> here's another buyer on my cell phone right now. 